Okay, so when you go out to the internet from your PC, you're sitting at a P you're sitting at home and you're on a PC, you're going out to the internet looking for web pages, what you would do is you would bring up a web browser, because a web browser is used for browsing the internet. So a web browser is a program that's on your computer that will accept as input files that are of the type HTML. So files that end in the HTML extension is what it, your web browser is looking for. If you have HTML files on your computer, you can see them. You don't have to go out to the internet because they're on your computer. But if you want to get HTML files from some other computer, you're going to have to connect to the internet. Your PC will have to be connected to the internet. And then the computer you're trying to get files from has to also be connected to the internet. So for example, if you wanted to go to Facebook's server, you would bring up a web browser. You would identify that you want to, you're looking for HTML files by saying, I want to use the HTTP protocol. So you type HTTP colon slash slash and then some unique string that identifies the machine you're trying to connect to. So the string you'd be typing in is www, which stands for World Wide Web, then facebook.com. Somewhere out connected to the internet is a server, Facebook server, that you are going sending a message to saying, I would like to get one HTML file from you sent back to me so I can see it. So there's a lookup table, a translation table within the internet that will say www.facebook.com is actually mapped to, so that's a URL, that's the Uniform Resource Locator. That's the name that hopefully people can remember. That actually maps to a number called the IP address, the Internet Protocol address. And every machine that's connected to the internet, including fax machines and telephones, all have a unique number, just like your cell phone has a unique phone number. So you're actually connecting to this machine number, not so much this name. This name is just being used as an entry in a table to map to a number. This would be like on your cell phone, when you have your friend's phone numbers programmed in, and then you have their names mapped to that number. So if you want to call one of your friends, you go through your phone and you look for them by name, and then you press call. You're not actually calling their name, you're actually calling their number. Your phone is acting like the translator. It's saying, you know, your, your friend Mary has the phone number 732 blah blah blah, and you actually dial 732, you don't dial Mary, you don't dial M-A-R-Y. So it's the same concept that this string is mapped to a number, and you're now going to that number. And actually, I'll show you something. If you want to get a server's number, there's a command on, um, if you go to, um, there's an old DOS command that still appears on computers today. But if you go to start, then go to run, and then it usually has command CMD loaded in the window and then you hit OK, a window pops up, and this is basically what the operating system before Windows came out, this is what it used to look like back in the 1980s. From this command, from this command window, you can type in the command ping, P-I-N-G, space, www.facebook.com, and hit enter. This command is basically sending a message to the Facebook server to test how long it takes for the message to get there, and when the server gets this message, it's going to reply to us, telling us how long it took to get here. In addition to that, it happens to, in its reply, tell us its number. So it's actually, it's just one of the side effects of this command is it'll tell us its number. So now it's replying, telling us it takes 10 milliseconds for us to send a message from here in New Jersey to Cal the server in California takes 10 milliseconds for the message to get there. So if we sent a request saying we'd like HTML from them, it takes 10 milliseconds 
for the message to get there. But in addition to that, it told us the number of the server. So, and Facebook happens to have many servers, so if you try this again tomorrow, you might get a different number. But I can now bring up a web browser and go to, instead of going to Facebook, I could go to HTTP colon slash slash. That means I'm looking for HTML files. But now I'm going to go to um, I'm now going to go to this number um, 66.220.158.32. So I'm now going I'm now browsing not to Facebook, but I'm going to HTTP colon slash slash, meaning I'm looking on the internet for HTML files, and I'm going to this number, and I hit enter. And the Facebook page comes up anyway. So there's really, there's two ways to go to the Facebook server. Actually, this would be one of the Facebook servers. One way, like on your cell phone, if you want to call your friend Mary, you can call Mary, or you could just bring up the number pad and start punching in numbers, as long as you get your number right. There's two ways to call. Same thing here. We could go to www.facebook.com and they'll just do a lookup, find the actual number of the server, and then send a message to that server. And that's the that's the complete message. We're not we're not telling the server which particular file we want. This the server has tons and tons of HTML files on it. We're not saying which one we want. We're just saying we want something. From that, we, and obviously we're only getting, we can only display one file. In <coughs> so we want one file from the Facebook server. They have tons of them. So which one would they send us? Well, what we could have done, we could have said www.facebook.com or this number. Either way, that'll connect us to this machine. Then we, if we knew exactly where on their server the file was, we could then say slash and a folder name and then slash and maybe another folder name and then eventually say slash and then the name of the file. Maybe the file is called login.html. But we would then have to know where that file is, where it resides on that server, which folder it's in. That's a lot of stuff to remember. And the goal is to try to have people who are going to use your web page remember as little as possible. If they have to remember too much stuff, they're probably not going to come to your website. So, we want them to be able to just remember www.facebook.com. And people are pretty much used to having www come first and com come last. So you really only have to remember the thing in the middle. Now the question is, when the message gets sent from your computer to this server saying, I want one HTML file, which one should they send back? So back when the internet was being developed, they had to come up with a default folder for you to put files in. If you don't say what folder you want the file to come from, it's going to go to this default folder. And then within that default folder, they'll pick one particular file that if you don't ask for a particular file, you're going to get this one. So they decided to use public underscore HTML as the name of the default folder where all servers will put their HTML in. If you don't specifically say what folder you want, you're going to go to that folder. And then within that folder, if there is a file called, if, you, if they don't specifically say what file they want, then you're going to, the server will return from the public underscore HTML folder, the server will return a file called index.html. If they specifically say a particular file, then we'll return that one instead. But if they don't say what they want to, um, what file they want, then by default we're going to give them uh, public under. We're going to go to public underscore HTML. So, for example, if we have in our folder, if we have a folder, if we had a server that had a folder on it called public underscore HTML, and then in that folder, we had a file called index.
and somebody went to our server, they're going, we're going to send them this file back to them. If, if we had another folder under public underscore HTML called login stuff, and then in there we had a file called login dot html. If somebody wanted to get to that file, if that if they wanted to come to our server, so let's say our server's name is www call, call it it two fifty dot com. Let's say we created a server, put an entry in the index table that mapped this URL to the number of our machine, and somebody went to our server, but said, I want to go to login stuff slash, and I want the file login dot html, then we'll give them specifically that file. We will go to, we'll go to this folder and grab this file and send it to them. But if they didn't say what folder or what file they want, they just said our server name and nothing else. We have tons of HTML files, so we have to give them something. What we'll end up giving them is we'll go to the public HTML folder, and then we'll give them the index.html file. That's what they get for if they don't tell us where they want to go. So it's a good idea to have a default folder where files, HTML files will come from if they don't tell us where they want it to come from because this gives them an opportunity to not have to remember our server's file structure. And they also don't have to bother remembering the name of the file. That's the page that they'll get. So the reason the name, probably back when the internet was being first uh, developed, the reason they came up with the name index.html is because if that's generally going to be the first file you get from that web page, you should be able to connect to all other web pages in our site. That way they don't have to remember anything. So if this page said something like, Here's the login stuff, here's the products we're selling, and so on. If it acted like an index to our whole website, then they don't have to remember anything. The only thing they ever have to remember is the name of the server. That then gets them to a web page which is an index to the rest of the server. From there, they can get to everything else. Okay, so Monmouth University has a server also connected to the internet. This server is in the basement downstairs, the one floor below us at the, towards the end of the hall. And they've named the server Zurek. And I think we said Zurek was a grasshopper like the cartoon. Okay, so they used to name the servers here after superheroes, but now they're naming them after cartoon characters. But there's a server downstairs called Zurek, and every student at the school has a folder on Zorak, and the folder is identified by your student ID name, student ID number. So if you look on your PCs now, you can see that one of your folders, and it's your M drive, one of your folders on the M drive is, it'll say your student ID on Zorak, or it'll say Zorak and then your student ID, one of those. <coughs> But that ends up being a folder that you have on the server downstairs to put stuff in. Under that folder, you have, so for your student ID, so if your student ID on Zurich is S and then zero and then whatever numbers come after that, this is a folder on Zorak downstairs, the university gives every student a folder called public underscore HTML, which is initially empty. If you put files into that folder, 
then uh, those files are viewable on the internet. So if somebody wanted to see any files you put into public underscore HTML, they could bring up a web browser from anywhere in the world and go to HTTP colon slash slash. There's no www here, it's just Zorak. Dot Monmouth. Dot EDU. That gets them to the server. Now we want to go to your folder, which is going to act like its own server. <coughs> so we would then say slash, and this is the only real annoying part, because this becomes hard to remember. S, your student ID. Okay. And if they were to go to this URL and hit enter, you have a folder called public HTML in there. If you happen to have a file in that folder called index.html, the Zorak server will return that file to the person anywhere in the world. We'll return that to that person. What we can then do in your public HTML folder is we could add more files and folders all over the place. But the only way anybody could ever get to anything other than this file, the file that's named in the folder public underscore HTML with the name index.html, that one they get if they just go to here. Any other file that you have under public HTML, whether it's in subfolders or not, they would have to specifically give the full path to it. So what we're going to do in this class is we're going to create a index.html file. And then under this folder, we're going to create a collection of projects. So we'll create a folder called, oh, I'm sorry, under public HTML at this level, we're going to create a project one and a project two. And for as many projects as we have, we'll create separate folders for those. Now, if somebody decided to go to your URL, so that would be zorakmama.edu slash tilde your student ID, and then they decided to go to slash project one, where would they end up, where would the server look to get HTML files to send back to them? Here's what would happen. So we would go to the Zorak server, then from the Zorak server we would go to your student folder. From your student folder, you did not say public underscore HTML. So we will look in that by default. That'll be the first place we're going to look. So you don't see it here, but that's really the, the path is your student ID, public underscore HTML, project one. But we didn't have to specifically say public underscore HTML, it assumes that's in the path. And then if we went to this folder, we didn't say a specific file. To look for. So what file would we look for? Again, it doesn't have to be this folder that, that we're looking for the index.html. If we direct our URL to a particular folder on a server, but don't say the name of the file we want, once again, we're going to by default look for index.html. So it would actually, this would actually go into your project one folder under public HTML. And now it doesn't have a specific file to look for, so once again, it's going to by default look for index.html. If you gave a specific file name, like login.html, then it'll go into project one looking for that specific file. But if you don't say what file you're looking for, then by default it'll look for index.html. Now it seems like um, if you don't have 
a file, the file that's being requested. So for example, if you looked into project one folder looking for HTML, and there is nothing in there, there's no index.html, there's nothing in there. You get a message that's kind of misleading. What do you, you get a message that says it's forbidden? Instead of file not, you could expect something like file not found. You get forbidden, like you're not allowed to be looking in this folder, but you are allowed to be looking in the folder. So it'd be, it'd be, a better message would be something like no index related file was found, instead of getting that forbidden message. So what we want to do is we want to say, we want to have, for, for this class, we want to have under our public HTML folder, we're going to need an index HTML, which will basically just connect us to all the project folders we'll have. So we'll do some, some of the basic HTML you learned earlier in the course. And we'll create links, project one, project two, project three, and if someone clicks on it, then they get thrown into that folder. And then the assumption is in that folder there'll be a file called index.html and they'll be able to see whatever that project is. If the file happens to be empty because we haven't done that project yet, then unfortunately they're going to get this forbidden message, but really it's just the project's not ready. Okay, so I put a little page together um, to use as a default index. And what you can do to copy it into your um, to copy it into your folder, um, if you go to and I'm going to go to my page on Zora, so it's Okay, so if you, if you wanted to, you could come, you could basically go to any page. This is one that has some project links on it. And if you want, if, actually for any web page on the internet, if you like the web page and you want to copy it, if you go up to Facebook server and you want to make a copy of their web page, go to the web page and then if you click on view, and it changes every year when the browsers change, but if you say view, um, say view and then source, you'll see a window pop up that shows you the HTML that's generating the page you're currently looking at. So this is the HTML that generated this page. And then what you can do is you can just shade the whole HTML start to finish, copy it, and then paste it into, you know, you could open up Notepad and just create a file, paste it into there and save it. And now you have your copy of it. And then this is one that just basically, um, you can have like links project one, project two, project three, and then your href could be, the href <coughs> could be to go directly into the folder that you want to um, put the project in. If you decided for whatever reason your projects should not have their first page be called index.html, it has to have some special name then the hyperlink should just go to whatever, should go to project one, and then whatever the special name is. Okay, so, you could eventually have,
So, and this is the project I think we just started the other day in uh, Dreamweaver. But basically, I've named this file index.html in my folder project 5, which is under a subfolder called projects, which is under a subfolder called IP250. So I gave the path, but I didn't specifically say the name of the file that I wanted. So it went to IT, the folder IT250. Under that, there's a folder full projects. Under that, there's a folder full projects file. And I just, my, the, the hyperlink just threw them into that folder. So therefore, it went into that folder looking for a file called index.html, and this is what came back. And then, like I say again, you can um, view the source. And this is the source. This was now created by Dreamweaver, so it's a lot bigger than it <coughs> needs to be. But this ends up being the source that displays this project. So what we can now do going forward is anytime you want to add a new, uh, anytime you want to add a new project to your class page, all you really have to do is create a new folder called project six or seven, whatever the next number is. And then you have to go back to your index.html and add one more link. That's just a one line cut and paste. So the line that says project six links to the folder project six, copy that and now say project seven links to folder project seven. And then just create the corresponding project and you have ready to start another web page. Okay. So now, as far as um, creating a web page, we could do a quick one right now using Microsoft Word. So instead of handwriting, um, instead of handwriting the page like you've been doing so far using uh, instead of using. Um, HTML and type it in, into a text editor, we're going to use Microsoft Word, which is not really meant for web design. However, Microsoft Word does have a feature when you save a file, you could save it as um, HTML. So I'll create a brand new folder. I'll call it Project project word and in here I'm going to create a word document word document now when I'm done with this I want its name in the end to be index.html so I'm going to call it index.docx so that's a word document standard word document then I kick off Word, and I could use some of the features of Word, like um, let's see. So let's see. For example, we could change the page color to let's pick an interesting. Monmouth University, so maybe we'll go with dark blue. And we can say insert uh, Okay, so I mean, I don't, the, oh, that's a bad color for uh, the projector. I want to change the color. Okay, something like that. It's not very pretty, but you get the idea. We're using features that Word has to create a Word document. Obviously, now we can drag pictures in if we want to go out to the internet and get pictures to put this into our site. But anything you can do with Word 
to create a Word document. We can do right here with Word. Then what we'll do is we'll save it. First we'll do a save because maybe later we want to edit this and make it better. And then we're going to do save as. And under save as, typically you've done save as to save a Word document maybe under a different name, but one of the other options you could do is you can save the, change the type of it. So we're going to scroll down and change the type, not PDF. We'll change the type to web page, HTML. So we'll select this one. And now what it's going to do, and here's where the thing I was saying about the file always has to be called index.html. That's not 100% right. There's other names like, for example, files, web files generated by Microsoft products they tend to drop the last L. So they're going to call this index.htm. And all web browsers, when they go out to a server and you don't say the name of the file you want, it will look for, I think it looks first for index.html. That's not there, then it'll look for index.htm. And there's a couple of other ones which we're going to use later in this course that if those two are not there, then it'll look for a third and a fourth choice and we'll be using those later on in this course. So the statement, it has to be named index.html, otherwise you get nothing, is not 100% true. But this one is going to be one of the files that they look for. So if we save this one, now this is the web page, the web version of the file. Now we're looking at index.htm, not the word doc. So if I back out of here, what the save as index.html did was, here's our original source document. This is what we would now use if we wanted to change our website. We would go back into Word, re-edit it, and then re-save it. We wouldn't want to start editing the HTML. It generated a file called index.htm, but it also generated a folder called index files. Now, you've done websites before where your HTML includes an image, but the image is not in the HTML file, it's in, it's in the folder right next to it, and you have to say, like, include the picture from this spot. So sometimes web pages have a supporting folder with other images in it. So that's what this ends up being. So now, if I go to Zorak, if I go to, so here, here's, here's what it's looking like as we're the web developers. It's looking like we're in public HTML, IT250 under projects, and now I called it Project Word. So if I go to a web browser, and I go to Zorak, I'll go to projects, and then under projects, I go to project, or you've got to spell it correctly with capital letters and small letters. I'm now going to the folder called Project Word, the folder we just created. And then in there, it's going to go looking for a file called index.html. But if there is no index.html, it'll take the index.htm. And this is what came back, and it looks very different <laughs> from what we actually created. I don't know if you remember, when I created it, these words were like red with see-through bodies, kind of, and now they just came out black. Sometimes what happens is things that Word supports, there is no corresponding HTML for it. So it's not guaranteed that what you see in Word is going to be what you see when you bring it up on the website. So Word is not the greatest tool in the world for developing web pages with. So you guys know from typing, you know, you were doing HTML by hand, by uh, bringing up a text editor and just typing them in and then saving them under any name you want and then clicking on them and it would pop up like an HTML, it would pop up like a web page. But what we did here was we took a product that is a good design tool where we can change the background color, change print, drag pictures around. Word is good for making an a attractive looking document. And then when we're done, we can just say save as HTML and we have a web page. So if somebody ever asked you, could you ever create a web page for me? You could do it really quick, as long as the web page was like a purely informational web page, which just gives out information. Like let's say they opened up 
a restaurant and they want a web page that says where they're located, what their phone number is, when they're open, and maybe print the menu. They're not asking anybody to interact with the web page. They're not asking people to log in. They're not interacting with the people at all. It's purely an informational web page. And it's one page, too. You're not hopping from page to page. You can make a pretty nice one using Word. And you can do it within, if you're comfortable with Word, you can do it within a few minutes. What we're going to do later on in this course is we're going to use a tool called Dreamweaver, which is like Word. But it has a lot, it's a, it's a tool dedicated to making websites. So it's like Word in that we can change the background colors, drag pictures in. But we'll able, be able to do a lot more stuff like set up forms for people to answer questions like, you know, where do they live? What are they looking to buy? They could send, they could send paragraphs to us and we could send paragraphs back to them. So it's a, a much more sophisticated tool, but it's going to be like word in that we're using a tool to make a nicely designed web page and then at the end we're going to say save as HTML. Okay. I think that's good.